Hi, my name is Sasha Stishko and we're in the studio today with the Canon R5. I'm going to take you through on one of my studio shoots, show you the lighting, break it all down, and I'm going to show you how to take a photo like this. Let's get started. Let's get the show on the road. Let's get set up. Let's, let's shoot. <laughs> Hi, welcome to King Size. We're in Studio One today. So the first thing when we get to the studio is one, making sure we've got everything, making sure we've got all our gear, that it all works, that we've got our modelling lights working, that we've got everything firing. That is my first priority when I get on set. Um, and then from there, once I've got the lighting set, we've tested it, I've got it to a place where I want it to be, then you start creating the vibe for the shoot. Um, getting everyone comfortable and ready to shoot and then giving direction and then working through the day and making sure that's a fun environment to work in. I think it's super important for, um, for a successful shoot to just have a good vibe, good atmosphere for everyone, a really nice working environment so that we can create something really great together. Oh, na, 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 eh. So at the moment we've just set up the lights, we've just put them in the position that I think that they might be in. We've got two lights back here with the polys, this is going to be bouncing onto the background creating really nice even light in the background. We started off by putting this guy up. Um, he's going to be lighting the back of our talent. Um, and then we've got these two lights at the front. One's a key light and one's a fill light. One's for the face and the rest is to fill out the entire image, the body, the fabric and everything else we've got going on. So now it will just be um, a process of going through each light and making sure we've got the right amount of power each, in each light to get the desired effect. Yeah, it's exciting. This is the exciting time when we make things happen. So we're going to do an outfit change now, um, we've tried this first one and now we're going to try something else, I want to see more of the body, the, I mean we're doing a dancer shoot so I really want to see the dancer's form, the dancer's expression, her muscles, her everything, once she in, she's in mid air she's going to be in her dancer mode so I kind of want to bring that to life, that's what makes it different from doing a fashion shoot or anything else of that kind so um, we're going to try something else and we're just going to see how it goes, eh? <laughs> Technically, from a studio point of view, it's quite a challenge to capture movement and get it all sharp. So that's why we use Scoro packs, which have a very large flash output at a really quick recycling speed, which means that I'm shooting 12 frames a second and every shot is lit and I've got her on everything it's sharp and beautiful. So that's the way I prefer to work when I'm working with movement. I don't really want to be making the talent tired every single time. I want to be able to, for her to jump and at least get two or three useful shots out of that. Um, so that's why it really helps to have a really quick recycling time on the studio lights and a really fast camera that can keep up as well. I love that. Let's just do some posing like that. Come over a little bit more this way, yeah. I'm looking for something else. I'm looking for something else that I haven't planned or um, that I haven't expected. So I'm trying to throw in different direction to get a different result and to get a different image. So it's really just like playing, playing with the talent, communicating with them, trying different um, directions. And especially when it comes to a dance, the dancing part of it is so emotive and expressive. It's like we can direct that more and get a completely different image. So that's what I'm wanting to do now, is try some different directions and see where that takes us. That's super exciting, because it could be something you just didn't expect and wasn't on the mood board, but it could be the shot of the day. I guess a mood board is like my visual diary of ideas. It's things that I am really drawn to for whatever reason. So I had a mood board for this shoot where 
had some dance poses, some fashion, some movements, some fabric. So what I'm really trying to pull out is different things out of these images and kind of marry them all together and see what we get. I'm always really interested in making images we haven't seen before. So it's kind of trying to take all the things that you're really drawn to and then throwing them all into one studio and trying something different and pulling out different qualities. So the mood board's really just to pull out those little those little threads of things that I really like or that I think could be really interesting. Casting is hugely important for jobs like this, especially when I'm really relying on the talent to bring quite a lot to the project. What I look for in talent is I usually look for a strength that can come out in camera. So I will, I've, I know Gemma and was lucky to work with her before, but I will usually look through their book and see what kind of energy or what kind of presence they have on camera. She's very striking, it has a natural way with the camera, so I knew that I could get something really great and really interesting out of her. And it's really important to build that chemistry with your model or your talent because um, that relationship is really, really crucial in creating an image that's strong and something that you want as well. I shot portraits for a long time and I think that taught me how to work with talent. There's ways of just connecting with them and there's so many ways you can do that. Just connect with the person and make sure that they feel comfortable and that they feel like they're in the safe space. Playing music really helps in terms of defining a uh, feeling for the, for the shoot or if there's like a specific attitude or if there's something you want to bring out of that person. There's definitely little cues like that that really help. And just throw one arm across. <laughs> I got all the shots that I had planned on getting, so it's the end of the shoot where I'm just trying to just throw myself in there and get something else. So I work best off tripod and with my favourite lens is an 85 and it's getting really close and it's a really, really beautiful lens to use, especially on portraits. Um, so I threw this up together because I've, I've tried it before, it's like a, a cool little fabric cave but it's it's a great um, kind of a barrier and a limitation for the model to work with because you kind of have to push against the fabric in order to make it look cool. So she's already having to do some things so that's a great way of getting um, I guess different body shapes and a response to the environment. So today was really great because we got to use the eye tracking focus on the R5 which is just super quick and intuitive. It's exactly what I look for in movement because I'm thinking about a million other things at once. And so with my tools I kind of just need to know that they're going to do the job and that I can focus on the creative side of things. So it was really great today because not a shot went soft, like it was incredible. I had her jumping, I had fabric in front of her face but every shot was pin sharp and it was totally usable. Um, so that was great because it just meant one less thing I had to worry about. I could just focus on creating and crafting an image. Um, I turned off the big power because I just wanted to keep it super simple. Sometimes it's easier to just pull everything back and then just kind of stick with what you really love. So I love the Power 88 just for its quality of light and its deep shadows and it's a beautiful beauty light. So coming in closer and shooting with that really worked for the effect that I wanted. It's um, great with colour and it just picked up on the textures of that fabric as well. Um, I kept the background lights just so that we could still keep that graphic effect to it. But yeah, it was really just about kind of simplifying it again and just going back to me and the model being really close together and, and creating some magic there. Now that's how a photo shoot goes. You start at one thing and then you end up in a wind tunnel. That's where the magic comes. I'm an overshooter by nature. I love to always get more than I need, um, but 
also knowing when to stop I think is a skill that we will gain with experience you know when you've got it in the bag but I could never stop shooting <laughs> photographers have so many hats and being on set we play so many different roles so I guess it's knowing how to conduct that better and be smoother with it and knowing how to talk business, how to value your worth. I mean, I guess that we're guilty of that as creatives. We always have a hard time valuing our time, valuing our worth. I think the sooner you get to know that, the more that people will respect that and you will also kind of develop a respect for yourself and give yourself more time to create. I learn about the world through my photography, so I'm not a person that probably could go out and just chat to anyone, but if I have a camera in my hand, that's how I connect. That's how I can get people to open up on camera. That's where I'm comfortable. And um, I love that photography enables me to connect with people from all over the world and all different ages. And um, yeah, it's my, it's what I can do. And that's it. I um, hope you've enjoyed this video and that you've been able to take something away from our lighting studio setup. I really enjoyed doing it. If you want to know more about the R5, click the link below. And if you want to see more content like this, then uh, follow Canon on social channels. On the social channels. Just on, on social. <laughs> <laughs> on social! Oh, bye! <laughs> that's it. We're done, we've got this. Um, I've really enjoyed making this video. Oh no, I haven't. What is it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> no, sorry, I never enjoyed it. <laughs>